Coming up, real wonders to explore in Qatar away from the stadiums. We meet one of the world's greatest athletes. And we hear about Qatar's competitive professional football league. The opening ceremony and first match of this year's FIFA World Cup at Al Bayt Stadium were brought forward one day following a unanimous decision taken by the Bureau of the FIFA Council. Consequently, the encounter between Senegal and the Netherlands was rescheduled from 1300 to 1900 on Monday the 21st of November. This change ensures the continuity of a long-standing tradition of marking the start of the FIFA World Cup with an opening ceremony on the occasion of the first match featuring either the hosts or the defending champions. Therefore, August 12, 2022 marked 100 days until kick-off at the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. A milestone which helps intensify the excitement ahead of the tournament. For His Excellency Hassan Al-Fawadi, Secretary General of the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, this is the final run-in to an exciting 12-year project. If you follow the amount of uh, interest that there's, that there's been in terms of the volunteers, uh, in terms of ticket sales, um, in terms of every day when you know anybody working within the Supreme Committee or when the World Cup walks by and talks to people on the street who want, who you know, passionately ask, how can they contribute to the World Cup? How can they be a part of the World Cup? You realize that there's a huge excitement. It was building up over the last 12 years, but 100 days to go, you can feel it, you can touch it, you can taste it, um, and I think it's 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 a matter of just you know the final countdown now. Nasser Al Keita, who's the CEO of FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 LLC, is confident that fans arriving from all over the world will enjoy a complete experience. In terms of what fans can expect when they come here, other than watching uh, amazing games in, in amazing stadiums, um, there will be a plethora of activities for them to do. There's a lot of uh, entertainment zones that we're creating for fans. Uh, um, we have a rich uh, culture and heritage where people can, can learn about our culture, uh, taste food from Qatar and from the region, visit our museums to learn about, about the rich history of, of the region as well. Um, entertainment, of course, plays a big part for fans that want to attend the World Cup, and we'll make sure that there is um, different types of entertainment for the different type of fans that will be coming to Qatar. Obviously, we have beautiful uh, coastlines here, we have beautiful beaches, uh, we know that people are going to be coming here in the winter, so they'll be uh, very happy to get some sun and some uh, uh, nice time on the beaches here. As well as the great outdoors, Qatar has many indoor entertainment areas, and the shopping malls are some of the most spectacular in the world. To mark the 100 days to go countdown, many of the malls gave local fans a chance to win match tickets. A dream come true for the winners, as the demand for FIFA World Cup tickets has been huge. If we look at the excitement of fans to attend uh, the World Cup, we can see that from the demand on the tickets. Um, demand reached uh, 70 million uh, tickets. We know that we have only th 3 million tickets available for the World Cup, so the demand is extremely high. Um, the pickup on the purchase of tickets is, is going extremely well. For football fans already in Qatar, excitement is everywhere. At a local QNB Stars League match between two of Qatar's best supported sides, Al Arabi and Al Rayyan, the fans were in fine voice as they joined in the countdown. Not are still 100 days to go here in the biggest event in the planet, in the World Cup in Qatar. 100 days left to the FIFA World Cup. We are honored and proud. Everyone here in Qatar celebrating and anticipating the moment. There is only 100 days to go until the FIFA World Cup in Qatar and we are so, so excited. 
100 days to go until the World Cup and we will be ready and present to support the Qatar national team. For the first World Cup in the Arab world, the first World Cup in the Middle East, um, it's, it's a great opportunity to really be a platform for bringing people together. When football fans arrive in Qatar for the FIFA World Cup, as well as supporting their countries in the spectacular stadiums, there'll be plenty of time to explore this incredibly diverse country away from the football. There are many specialised tours to learn more about Arabian culture, as well as adventure rides in the sand dunes and trips to discover the inland sea. During the summer months, the most popular of experiences is a boat trip to see one of the largest aggregations of whale sharks in the world. The whale shark experience is something new. This year, we've the first time, together with Discover Qatar, developed a professional program that makes it much more accessible for the visitors. It's a day excursion. You go essentially from the tip of Qatar in the north to the whale sharks, which is about a 90 minutes ride on a small cruise ship or excursion ship. And the feedback has been phenomenal. Even though the coastal waters of Qatar provide the perfect location for large numbers of whale sharks, which gather to feed close to the surface, it's important that those leading the trip know the exact location of these majestic creatures to ensure that they have guaranteed sightings. This is made possible by Mohamed al Jeda, who's the head of the Whale Shark Research Project in Qatar. For us to find whale sharks, at the beginning of the season, we come in several trips until we find whale sharks. We tag them with a satellite tag, and uh, that's how we can track them. Uh, and also, it helps us to find where they are. No need for us to come and search and waste energy and, and time. So tagging is one of the important things to do at the beginning of the season. There is uh, several big uh, aggregations of whale sharks in the world. Uh, one of the biggest is the one in Cancun, in Mexico. Uh, but uh, I think now we have the biggest aggregation. Although these endangered species leave for warmer water in the winter months, many other experiences away from the football are still available for fans to enjoy. During the World Cup, Qatar is putting on huge entertainment. You will find activities and activations in every corner, whether it's along the corniche or around the stadiums, to immerse yourself again into the culture or just enjoy the weather and the outdoors. The most popular excursions and experiences are obviously, first and foremost, the city itself. You can walk the center of Doha. You can explore the neighborhoods, the modern part now, which is the Musharraf district, and also the souk. But the real stunning part for me living here in Qatar is the inland sea, Hoa Aludet. That is amazing. You have the sand dunes meeting the sea. You have low tide and high tide, which creates a phenomenal landscape. You also have in the north, Altakira, the mangroves, which no one would expect that we have this flora and fauna in this part of the world. And then I hope when you go home, you will have great memories of Qatar, the wonderful Arabic hospitality of the local people that have put in so much work and effort to put this World Cup together and host the world. I watched 1978. I watched the matches. I followed the players. I appreciated the technical ability of the Tunisian national team. It's in the memory of every Tunisian, because at that time it was hard to qualify for the World Cup. Only one could represent the African continent. And then came the golden era with a local coach, Abdelmadid Shithali, and a lot of very significant players. Of course, it was a huge accomplishment, even though the Tunisian national team did not progress past the group stage. But they were very special in their performances and their technical ability. Tunisia against Mexico and the players that scored were phenomenal. Mexico, 
20 years after Tunisia created history by becoming the first African and Arab country to win a game at a FIFA World Cup, Sami Trabelsi was captain of his country, leading them out in Marseille to face England at France 98. The first game in 1998. It was hard and difficult on a psychological level. 20 years later, we didn't have players of the same quality. It was a new experience for us. If we could go back in time, I think we would have done better. Participating in a World Cup is something very special in every player's history, and it's special for me. It's every player's dream. Two footballers who'll be trying their best to help Tunisia qualify for the knockout stages play their club football in Qatar. Youssef Masakni of Al Arabi and Alda Hale's Fajani Sassi, who featured at the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Although Tunisia didn't progress past the group stage four years ago, it was a memorable experience for the midfielder. No doubt, playing a tournament such as the World Cup makes you feel extraordinary. You don't play every day amongst the best stars of the sport. When I was a kid, I wished I could play in the World Cup. And finally, that dream came true, you know? I played against the best players in the world, you know, against Belgium and England players. The experience was overall good and was part and will be part of another historic event for Tunisia. A highlight for Fajani Sassi in 2018 was scoring a goal at a FIFA World Cup. Scoring a goal in the World Cup is something unreal. And even more so if it's the first goal you score for an Arab-African team in the World Cup 2018. When I scored, I couldn't believe it. I knew the whole country of Tunisia was watching the game and I was satisfied to make them happy. Even people from other Arab countries were supporting us. I feel so thankful that I could score. I can't put into words what I felt at that very moment. Yusuf Masakni was all set to join the national team for the 2018 tournament when he was badly injured in the last game of the season for his then club, Al Dehail. It's a painful memory for him. I came on for the second half of the match and then I got injured. When I fell, I knew it was my anterior cruciate ligament. I felt it. At first, I didn't feel the disappointment, but afterwards, when the team asked me to go to Russia with them to support the team, it was tough. When I was watching their first game, I just couldn't stop feeling how I could have helped the national team if I was on the field. Once Russia 2018 finished, you start thinking about Qatar 2022 and how you can qualify and make it. And you have to be present in the national team from that moment to when the World Cup starts. We all saw how the FIFA Arab Cup went and I really felt at home on the pitches I'm familiar with, hotels that I'm familiar with, so it's as if I was playing at home. Plus the Tunisian fans helped us a lot in the FIFA Arab Cup. And of course in the FIFA World Cup, it'll be the same for the Tunisian national team. Fan leader Ayman Sassi has a special message for all Tunisian fans coming to the FIFA World Cup. Only inside the stadium to Tunisia, I think they are going to support their national team with all their power. But outside of that boundary, we are going to support Doha to deliver the best edition of FIFA World Cup ever happened. Playing the first game against Denmark in Education City Stadium will not be an easy game. However, it will be very easy with a big number of Tunisian supporters where they will be inside the stadium and their voice will be like an earthquake. Nothing can be heard above their voice. So I'm inviting you to come with a big number and I'm looking forward to see you there making the show and supporting from the first minute to the last moment. Qatar's most successful athlete is Olympic gold medalist and three-time world champion Mutaz Issa Barshem. 
The high-jumping maestro was just 19 years old when Qatar won the bid to host the FIFA World Cup, a moment he remembers vividly. Honestly, this was remarkable for everyone in Doha, even outside Doha. Personally, for me, I remember that I was at home with my family and some friends when they announced that Qatar will be hosting. We went out to our home garden to celebrate, and I think everyone was celebrating, not only us. This is not only about Qatar, but about the whole region. And what is the region? It's the Persian Gulf and the neighboring countries. All in all, this World Cup is for all of us. As an elite athlete who travels the world training and competing, Mutaz Bashem appreciates the compact nature of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar and how it will benefit the players. This is a very important point, as this is the first time the World Cup takes place in the region. Short distances between stadiums and hotels. That's good to speed up the recovery for the players. Keeping a constant travel schedule is very tiring. And this is what makes the Qatar tournament a special one in terms of recovery and sustainability. That means more comfort for the players. And this was one of the goals in Qatar's bid. The sustainability and for the fans, they could watch three matches a day. This is so exciting. Other than the ordinary experience of attending a game and cheering for your team, there's also the cultural aspect. Coming to a new country with a certain preconception about it. You might have heard something and got the wrong idea. That's why you have to come and see for yourself. There'll be a lot of things to learn about this country. You can visit the monuments and the new sporting facilities set up for the World Cup. So I think it'll be a great experience for all football fans coming from abroad. For an athlete who's competed and succeeded in some of the most iconic stadiums around the world, he's still entranced by the stadiums that have been built in his own country. And he has a couple of favourites. So far, it's Raz Abu Aboud and Al Bayt stadiums. They're both special in their own way. Al Bayt Stadium isn't the most modern stadium, but it's representative of Qatari culture. It includes traditional tents with each corner reflecting the Qatari lifestyle. As for Raz Abu Aboud Stadium, it's very interestingly inspired by Legos. Anyone can come up with a crazy design on paper, but bringing such a design to life is truly unbelievable. I've been to so many places and played in the most modern stadiums, but nothing comes even close to the facilities, planning or event organization in Qatar. Today, whatever tournament that's happening in Qatar is something to be praised by the world. So I'm extremely proud. But the one he loves the most is the Khalifa International Stadium, which is significant for more than one reason. Khalifa Stadium actually holds a very special place in my heart. Other than the World Championships in 2019, which is my biggest achievement so far, it was the place where I received my very first training as an athlete. My father's a former athlete, and he also received his training there before the renovations. So I started in Khalifa Stadium. Also the things I've been through before the World Championships in 2019, like my injury, the struggle to bounce back, and wanting to play in Doha among my people, all make Khalifa Stadium so special. It seemed only natural for Mutaz Barshem to be selected as an ambassador for Qatar ahead of the FIFA World Cup, a role of which he's very proud. To me, the World Cup means entertainment, excitement, and as we say, a sports event that brings the world together. As a Qatari player and athlete, I'm very proud. And being Qatar's ambassador for the World Cup or any other sports event is the least I can do to express that. This is my duty to make this event a success.
Competitive league football has been played in Qatar for more than 50 years. Though established in 1963, the league's first official season was played in 1972-73, and it was known as the Q League until 2009. Now known as the Qatar Stars League, the competition boasts 12 full-time professional clubs and operates a system of promotion and relegation with the Qatari Second Division. Its CEO, Hani Balan, is proud of the league's progress over the years and excited about its latest collaboration with FIFA. We've signed a partnership with FIFA uh, 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 regarding the participation agreement of the clubs in which FIFA will assist, will help also uh, in terms of consultation, uh, education, providing education programs for the clubs. So again, uh, FIFA is, is now part of, of QSL uh, 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 in terms of, uh, again, giving us uh, the expertise, the experience. So we're very happy also for this and we're very proud of the collaboration with FIFA as, as the only league in this area to have this uh, type of collaboration. The QSL is a very competitive league and all of Qatar's national team players take part in it. The league has also always had a very strong international appeal. Currently, Al Sadd benefit from the services of Ghana international Andre Ayu, who's in his second season and is all too aware of how tough it can be. I think there are a lot of big players who came here to the QSL who made it in Europe but didn't succeed. In the, in the QSL, so it's not it's far from an, an easy league. That's why for me it was very important that my, the first season I was able to, to adapt because I looked at the past and I saw that a lot of players came in and succeeded, but a lot also came in and didn't succeed. Al Sadd is the most successful club in the league's history with 16 titles. They're the only Qatari side to have won the AFC Champions League, which they've done on two occasions in 1989 and 2011. In recent years, Al Sadd was able to bring Xavier Hernandez to play in the Qatar Stars League. After three seasons as a player picking up four trophies, Xavi transitioned to coaching and he was named the manager of Al Sadd in May 2019. He won seven titles in less than three years before heading back to his former club Barcelona in November 2021. Javi was impressed with what the QSL had to offer. Yes, I'd say I've seen substantial improvement in the last two or three years. Better coaches have come here, better overseas players and local players too. The aspired generation that started in 2006 is now competing at a higher level. And in the national team with Felix, and this makes the league really good very competitive, tactically very strong. The coaches are sharing lots of things. Any of them can cause you tactical problems. People work hard. Physically, it's up there with any other league in the world. It's very competitive and really good to watch. World-class footballers have played an important role in helping improve the league and in raising its profile over the years. Among them, Pep Guardiola and FIFA World Cup winners Marcel Desailly and Frank Leboeuf in the mid-2000s. Recently, Belgium international Toby Alderweireld was plying his trade in the Qatar Stars League. The most high-profile addition to the league this season is Argentine legend Hernán Crespo, who's taken up the reins at Alderweireld, the QSL's most successful team in the past decade. I really am very delighted to, to be part of this, of this league, then I'm really, I'm really happy. We work very, so hard during the pre-season to try to, to do our best in, the, in this league and uh, we want to do it. We want to show that, that we, we work in this, in this month and uh, nobody can uh, promise to win titles, but Yes, I can promise that we'll be competitive. In the same time, our goal is to win the league. <laughs> the new 2022-23 season was able to get underway during the summer heat of Qatar because the QNB Stars League was allowed to use a number of the FIFA World Cup stadiums that are air-cooled. 
The Khalifa International Stadium and Education City helped get things underway during the first week in August. And then, a week later, two of the most supported teams in the QSL, Al Arabi and Al Rayyan, went head to head at Lusail Stadium. Having now established itself as one of the top leagues in Asia, the Qatar Stars League continues striving to reach higher standards and spreading the example of its own professional footballing culture in the country and overseas. Next month, we meet a Mexican football legend. We learn more about Qatar's highly renowned Aspire Academy. And we step inside the stadium that'll host the FIFA World Cup Final. <laughs>